paper has shown some of the markings on the axis are arrays as shown in the following figure. With what speed did the ball strike the ground? So you can see that uh, here on y-axis that there are no markings, and here also, this is what is telling twelve, twelve seconds. This is two. This is one. Here it is missing. <laughs> with what speed it is? With what speed did the ball projected? Or with what speed did the ball strike the ground? So when it's striking the ground means, I think uh, this is the initial speed of projection. This is what the speed with which it will strike it. So can we do one thing? Uh, why to solve the problem? Shall we make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven meter per second? How can you say it can be seven, 14, anything? No, one unit can be uh, any of the thing. So we can't just make a guess here. So it has to be worked out. Hope you are able to understand here. Some some rough diagram from from a very high tower it is building. Let's not bother about to what height it is. So here is what I'll project a ball. I'm going to project with a certain speed. Then then it will move. It will strike as it is a tower is of very large height. So definitely, what do you expect after certain time? <coughs> mg and it will start moving with a constant speed. Uh, that's what we'll call terminal velocity. It will start moving with a constant speed. That's called like a terminal velocity. And this will when it will happen at t equal to twelve seconds. At t equal to zero, we have projected. And then you see that after certain time, it will change the direction of motion. If I take upward as positive, the downward should be negative. And at one instant of time, it is zero. So what is the time here? It will be at two seconds. Then, then when it is ascending, what forces will check it? What are the forces? It will have velocity, say V, the viscous drag, and mg. When it is descending, mg viscous drag will be upward. Some other, some viscous drag will be upward. And, 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 and uh, so we can't, it will have some velocity, say so let's not bother it. So V2 also V1. Because the viscous drag should act opposite to direction of motion. After a long time, so we know it will attain terminal velocity. In that case, it will start descending with a constant speed. After 12 seconds, after 12 seconds, the velocity almost remains constant. So after this, it will move with a constant speed. Okay, this velocity we don't know, but but what we have, we have divisions. Like you can see the graph: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here, one, two, three, four, five. So let's assume that, let's assume bring some value. If let this be seven n, this will be minus five n. Let's assume that one, what is the value of n will calculate? I think our problem will be solved. <coughs> so what is the initial velocity now? It is equal to seven n. What is the terminal velocity? This should be equal to five n. This is the most important the decision which you are going to take. Rest all mathematics, huh? you can manage. I, and we have certain information. What is that? Time taken to move from year to year is two seconds. Okay, let's write expression for the retardation A1. So what is this A1 is equal to? I'll, I'll, I'll proceed the calculation part here. This A1 should be equal to uh, net force by mass. What is the net force that are acting? So this will be dv by dt or just I'll write a. Uh, a1 we wrote it. Uh, there. Okay, let it be. A equal to dv by dt. Uh, what are the forces that are acting? <coughs> the viscous drag. Okay. 
because we know the viscous diagonal will be proportional to velocity m self has given. So a resistance, the a resistance will be always proportional to the velocity. So this will become dv by Okay, let's do one thing. Uh, this uh, I have projected this with an initial speed how much seven n, and at is point it has come to rest. So velocity should be zero at this particular point. Okay. So this will simplify. This will simplify. Then we'll see what will end up the equation. But the initial that assuming 7n, 5n is, I think, the major part of the problem. Rest all from here is the pure mathematics. We need not to bother much. So this will become minus m alpha log of alpha vm g is equal to 7n0 is equal to this will be 2. So this will become log of uh, negative, <coughs> negative sign is there. So first let me put the limit uh, log g minus of log g plus log of alpha 7 alpha 7 n alpha m plus g equal to 2 alpha by m. So this will become log of check once mathematics. I may be okay. Let, let's keep it here. So let's simplify now. Okay, what to do now? Uh, there is nothing, no information of that n. No, what, what to simplify here? Let's come here, like a look at here. No, this is something very important. So at finally, when it contains terminal velocity, when uh, ball is, when ball attained, terminal velocity, what is the condition we'll get? F equal to mg. And what is F is equal to alpha vt? And what is terminal velocity? Terminal velocity is equal to phi n. Can you replace now? So that n alpha by m. Very important. Very good idea. <laughs> then you can solve. Otherwise, we'll come and get stuck here. We don't know what to do after this. So substituting this. Uh, 12 by 5. So finally, I'll end up with 12 by 5, 2 alpha by m. Mm, uh, this will become, anybody yeah, take calculator and give me the thing. I don't have any information here. Log of 12 by 5. Or get, just finally give me the value alpha by m. Zero point eight and five and then this, total by five. Uh -huh, that one uh, by two by two will be zero point four three seven five. Okay, this is the primary equation. I'll keep it one. This two. Put two in one. So alpha by m will get will get the value of n. Four point five six nine up to three decimal place. So what is the initial velocity? Seven n mm, seven into four point five six nine. Okay, I'm using calculator. I'll I'll end up with something thirty one point nine eight five. But what is the question asked? This is initial speed of projection.
whatever the terminal velocity should be equal to just phi n. So phi into 4.5 into 4.5. Let me check in the calculator. Okay, yeah, fine. 22.854 meter per second. So there's the speed with which the ball strike the ground. See, all this, well, like a viscosity, I think in our books, we didn't had much discussion, am I right? We, but year afterwards, whenever the ball is projected from a tower of large height, the ball, what happened after ascending some distance, after descending some distance, will attain terminal velocity. And when striking the ground, it will strike with terminal velocity. This is, you have to take it for granted in all such air resistance problems. Provided if it says the tower of large height, if it doesn't say tower of large height, okay, then you can't assume this condition. Okay, I think, so I think we have to really fight with this, uh, the data here, tall building, the tall building, because of that, we are assuming. If it's not tall building, then no question like when striking down, it may not attain terminal velocity. Good idea. So the tall building is something very important. Now making things clear. Now, every problem you cannot assume only when it is tall building, okay. It can be asked in advance, sir, because we don't have much <coughs> uh, very in-depth in any calculations. Are you taking printout? I don't have any options because the screen is only this much. Huh? I can't scribble. Uh, there's a maximum, uh, like with so much of stress, we are writing it. <laughs> 